All right. Hello, everyone. We are back with another episode of the Family Entrepreneur Life live show. Today is a guest expert series show, and I have the amazing Heather Gray with us here today. And if you haven't heard of her, if you haven't seen her in any of the other groups, we like to call Heather the Mindset Ninja. You will see why in just a short period of time. So if you are here, if you are watching, make sure to throw us some likes and some hearts on the screen. If you have questions while Heather is doing her thing, please, please comment with them uh, because she loves to just jump people's questions while she's chatting. So Heather, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and what you're going to be talking about with us today? Sure. Thanks so much for having me. I'm totally pumped to have this conversation with you. So I'm um, a mindset and performance coach, and I work with online business owners who are in the process of up-leveling. And one of the things that you and I know from having these conversations outside of the show um, and uh, on in other groups is that we can't bring our businesses or our dreams with us if we don't bring our partners. Because if we don't do that hand in hand, our partners aren't going to be with us when we have that like amazing moment of our dream coming true. And so in the family entrepreneur life, like so much of it is how do you have those hard conversations? How do you dream and have a relationship taking care of both without constantly feeling like you're choosing one or the other? And so when you and I were kind of hashing out and talking to your members about what they most needed to hear, it just seems really clear that Part of it is how do you have the conversation? Um, and so that's really where I want to jump in with you guys today. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. We've got a couple people watching live. Um, Andrea's here. I know she was really excited to have you come on the show. Um, Tom, totally upstairs watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll make a cameo later on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking communication strategies for couples on the demands that come with entrepreneurship. And I think that is a huge topic. Um, obviously, for any of you who know Tom and I's story, this was something that we struggled a lot with in the beginning. Um, and let's be totally honest, we still struggle with it now. You know, no one's ever perfect. Um, I've had calls with her before kind of to help me walk through some of my stuff because it doesn't always translate when you're talking to your spouse. So Heather, what do you got for us? So the thing that I like really wanted to start with is a hard truth that one of the main reasons why entrepreneurs struggle in relationships is they get too entitled about their dream and they feel too um, sort of important, I think, in a way that their dream somehow trumps everything. And that entitlement is actually more of the conflict that becomes in a relationship than the entrepreneur part. And I don't think that entrepreneurs realize that, that like when you're in a relationship, the core idea here is what are my wants and what are my needs? And by getting into a relationship with me, you are agreeing to know my wants and to know my needs, and you're agreeing to being willing to meet them. And that goes both ways. So an entrepreneur, when they have their idea, when they have their big dream, when they want to change a shift in the um, in the family dynamic or they want to change their work schedule or, or their income, they get that idea and they get that moment and they get super excited. And when they don't get matched with equal excitement from their spouse, mm -hmm. they start to feel upset because their dream feels threatened. It feels like they're being criticized, that they're not being supported and then suddenly it's you were supposed to love me unconditionally but now apparently you only <laughs> love me if i have a nine to five and the fight starts right there and it's because i don't think entrepreneurs know how to have the conversation and the only way i'm going to teach them how to have the conversation is if i make it a little less personal so I wanted to share an example with you guys today. Um, I, when I started my career, before I met my husband, I was working in teenage residential programs uh, with high risk, assaultive and violent youth. My background is in clinical social worker, uh, is in clinical social work rather. So I was working one-on-one -on -one with these students. By getting into this job, 
I was actively choosing to work with kids who would at some point, because of their diagnosis, their struggles, try to hurt me, try to assault me um, in a lot of different ways. And when my husband met me and we were just dating, I think it was actually on our first date where he saw a bruise on my arm and he's like, oh, what the heck happened to you? And I was like, I was bit. <laughs> And, that's, and like and like you know then you have a lot of explaining to do and that's when it's like okay why do you choose a job to hear people bite you and it, i had to share my passion to say that this part of the job is really hard and this isn't my favorite part of the job getting hurt being threatened having my physical space um sort of invaded upon but if i simply said to him you have to be with me and yes people are going to threaten me and yes i may end up in physical restraints and yes i may get a bruiser here and no i don't want to talk to you about it i'm not including him in the why i'm not including him in why i believe this is so important but when i backed up and he said well what the heck these kids just can't control themselves and i said well no it's not that they can't nobody taught them how so they go into fight or flight response constantly and i back up and i had the conversation with them about why the kids did the behavior and then i led with why i was so passionate to change it these kids don't end up in lockup you can change a life you can change a family and this is why it's so important to me and i led with that and then i got him to buy in he didn't really ever agree all the time he still didn't like that i chose a job that had crazy hours he didn't like that i was putting my physical safety at risk kind of willingly and by choice but it started the conversation and if you think about people who want to be policemen firemen work in the military do the overnight shift take jobs that require travel there are 50 million different jobs, aside from entrepreneurs, that cause compromise in conversation in a relationship. Entrepreneurs need to stop thinking they're so damn special because <laughs> as soon as they realize that they're one with the people, that they are entrepreneurs and they have a dream, but they've also chosen to be in a relationship with a family and they have to figure out a way to do both, just like the doctors who work the overnight shift, just like the on-call security people who choose to be bodyguards, just like everybody who takes some kind of risk to leave a quote unquote different lifestyle and realize that they're one with the people and they just have to have a good relationship talk. Ariana, it all gets easier. It just gets <laughs> easier. That. Like you just have to recognize that your entitlement doesn't come with entrepreneurship. It is just, your version of what you want to do in your life it doesn't have to be everyone's but when you can have a conversation with someone and explain it you're setting up a better foundation now i have i have tips and strategies for how to do that and we can jump into that but i thought we should check in on the comments and see what people are saying and uh what's going on on your side of the screen Yes. So we've got Tom upstairs who just brought out that quote for us. Entrepreneurs need to stop thinking they are so damn special. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to fight. I've been gonna... mean. <laughs> You've been mean. <laughs> um, the why is so important. You are so right. Entrepreneurs get caught up in their idea, but often don't know how to have the conversation with their partner. And that's coming from Tom, who was in that position when we first started getting into all of the business stuff and he didn't know he didn't know why i was saying no all the time and why i had a problem with it until we sat down and he asked me why do you keep telling me no this is my dream this is what i want to do and i said well why why do you want to do that why do we have to go this route and that's when we started to get into those deeper not easy i'm, I'm telling you guys this from a place of love the conversations are not going to be easy but they're necessary and once you have them and once you have the first one the second one gets easier the third one gets easier and so on and so forth so i'm not saying this is going to be a simple thing and you know relationships differ for a lot of reasons but if you can bring yourself to have that first conversation with your spouse i think 
things just kind of get better from there and you can start to get some clarity on what they're thinking and they can kind of see what you're thinking and then you guys can move forward as you know kind of this one aligned being absolutely absolutely so let's dive into how do you have the conversation yes, please <laughs> now it's it's really easy when entrepreneurs are kind of on their own before they meet their person because they basically get to say this is who i am this is what i do kind of take it or leave it like unapologetically and the person they're dating gets to say yeah that works for me or no that doesn't work for me and it's an active choice because that's what happens in dating anyway like you just like how are you living your life this is how i'm living mine does my way match with yours etc cetera, etc cetera. but entrepreneurs don't usually start that way we don't get so ballsy to think that we can go out on our own can we can live bigger show up bigger like when we're 19 20 or in our early 20s we know a lot of people in the space who have but more often people have been in the grind of the nine to five They've been doing their business. They've been building their family already. And suddenly they get a moment that says, I think I'm better than this. I think I want something different than this. And I remember my moment. I owned my own business. I had transitioned away several years ago from the residential life. And I was just in a brick and mortar private practice. I was playing it safe and I was coasting in my business and I gave a person, I was a clinical therapist, so I was working with people on um, their personal mental health, depression and anxiety and stuff. And I remember sitting in the room with a client and thinking to myself, like, this is the 10th time in how many months I've said this. I think I'm better than small town USA. I think I have a message that more people need to hear and I can't do it this way anymore. And I think I said to myself a couple expletives because I had it, I like I had it, right? It was the brick and mortar, it was the successful business, it was coasting, I had a waiting list, I, I had the income, I was making the six figures that everybody talks about all on my own and suddenly I wanted more. And I had to go home and tell my husband, something has to change. This isn't working for me anymore. And when you figure out that moment, what is working, what's been working for us is no longer working for me, is where that conversation starts. To say, I know we have our lives built in a certain way. I know we're used to me leaving the house at seven for work and coming home at six, but we've been doing it this way for so long and I'm not happy. I'm not motivated. This is affecting me. And I'm not, I'm not sure where it's going to go. I'm feeling kind of nervous and scared, but I think I need to make a change. That part of the conversation, Ariana, it leads with the thoughts, the feelings, and the experience. This is what living this life is like for me. This is how I'm feeling. I want something different. More often than not, and I, you know me, so I'm pretty verbal. I came home that day and was like, holy hell, I have to do something different. This can't be my life anymore, right? <laughs> but most people are not me, and they process internally, and they process a little slowly, and then they go, you know what? My wife isn't going to be okay with, um, I just am changing my job, and I'm going to go out. So I have to have all the answers. So separate of the relationship, they make a plan. They're going to leave their nine to five. They're going to start working on the weekends. They're going to start doing this little side hustle. And then when they have all the pieces together, they can deliver it to their spouse, pay it a company and say, here you go. I don't want that anymore. I just want this. Can we go now? And they think with good intentions that that's the way to do it because their story is, is that reduces anxiety. But when you build a new dream, and you don't include your partner in it from day one, they're not there when you arrive into it. So it means saying and sitting in the, I don't know where this is going, I wanna make a change, but I really need you with me. This is what it's like. And then allowing the spouse to have the emotional reaction. The questions, like questions are not a lack of support. Like, I, like it makes me batty, Ariana, when everyone's like, well, I keep getting asked, like, 
how are you spending on your time and are you just building your business on Facebook and my friends and my family they just don't get it no of course they don't get it who built a business on Facebook we've been doing that for what less than seven years we're not even at 10 years yet so of course people are finding what we want to do unfamiliar questions are part of the territory and they don't imply a lack of support it just requires that immediate fear because spouses go into that fight or flight response as soon as they hear something's going to change they go to what's going to be asked of me how is this like who's going to be who's going to do this who's going to do that am i going to lose you it feels divisive it feels like you're going away rather than saying i want to bring you with me this is what i'm thinking what are you thinking and in including the spouse and their worries and one of the things my husband was crystal clear about with me is he's like you've been really good with your office hours you know when you're working and you know when you're not if you're just on the computer all the time am i you know am i going to come second and i was able to say well no i have office hours i'm expecting mm -hmm. to keep them so I, it, the question was asked and it was answered and I agreed to it because he doesn't want my business to overtake our lives. He does like, that's not what he signed on for. He wants a partnership. He's separate of it. He's not, it's not like you and Tom, he's not involved in my business, but he wants to know when I'm available to him and when I'm not. So we had the conversation. The, the other thing too, is that when we go into fight or flight, right? So we hear changes coming at us. The wall goes up. The entrepreneur or the dreamer who wants something more feels attacked and then their tone changes and they lose the relational approach. And entrepreneurs, we're a rough bunch. <laughs> we tend to treat the recipient <laughs> as stupid and dumb. You just don't know. You just don't understand. I've got this rather than of course you don't know of course you don't understand let me explain it to you and allow that kind of negotiation now those kinds of steps are when it goes smooth and i have some tips and strategies for you when it becomes a fight when it becomes tension and conflict and i should probably do a break and check in with you guys about how you're <laughs> and what you're thinking so I want to jump back to what you talked about was that moment that you knew you were destined for something else. I know that people watching had that moment. So I would love um, for if you're watching now, if you're watching the replay, share that moment with us about when you knew. And I'd love to find out how some of you kind of approached your spouses with that, uh, because I think we're going to have some different experiences there, some different levels of communication there. Um, and, you know, Tom and I talk about ours often, but this is part of the reason I love doing the member stories is because I think other people's stories and other people's experiences are so powerful for those of you that are just getting started or just experiencing those things, because you can see that one, you're not alone that all of us have gone through it before you and two that you're not the only one in your particular situation i used to talk to tom about that all the time i feel like i don't have anyone to talk to you know no one is doing what i'm doing because i'm you know you're the entrepreneur and i'm the spouse that's just kind of stuck supporting you and like running our other businesses while we're trying to start this new one and you know i kind of made myself the victim and he was like well you know he showed me he showed me there are other people like me i'm meeting lots of you <laughs> all over the place so i think that that's huge um we have andrea has a, a comment um she Oh, let's see. We can see it here. I thought it was unrelated to my corporate misery until I finally had it. I was on a business trip in Boston. My hubby was home in Texas with the kids. We met in Denver for a weekend getaway. My arm was so bad it kept us from enjoying our much needed rare time alone. And it was then that I decided I cannot do this. I have to do something else. I got the courage to share it with him. He was very open and encouraging. We made a plan. I gave notice and my arm pain went away. Wow. 
I think that happens a lot, Ariana, where people feel their unhappiness as physical discomfort because mm -hmm. I think we're trained to not take our happiness seriously, but that if something hurts, if something aches, we then get to pay attention to that. So we, our bodies on some level, I think sometimes get conditioned to this isn't right. I usually notice, I tell people that the warning sign for this is the Sunday blues that happen at four mm -hmm. o'clock. Um, is the idea that right when people realize their weekends are going to end or if they're not working a traditional work week and their days off for like Monday or Tuesday, it's the day before they have to go back to work right around that dusk and sundown time when that last day off is ending and the anxiety kicks in and the misery kicks in. A lot of people realize in the moment of misery that they're unhappy and, and something needs to shift. Um, that, that tends to Sundays at four o'clock. <laughs> I can totally see that. So um, you said you have some tips for people that are trying to have that conversation and are kind of having issues there. Let's sure. dive into so, that. So I think that part of it is understanding and being willing to understand and validate the partner response. So we have the entrepreneur, the dreamer, and then we have the partner. And recognizing that the partner is simply going to be nervous, scared, unsure, and actually perhaps doubtful. You know, it's it's okay. Like I always say to people, we know who we married. And so when somebody who likes a very structured schedule and works nine to five, suddenly comes home and says I want to be an entrepreneur and the partner looks at them and says really because that's a lot of work and <laughs> <laughs> you actually clock in and clock out and you don't you don't actually go extra you're not the extra mm -hmm. mile kind of guy are you are you sure you want this um it's about recognizing that the partner's going to have a lot of reactions and that reaction isn't where they land but if you can say, hey, listen, I see you seem unsure. What's that about? Or I see you have a lot of worries. What are they? Let me hear them. And then really hear them. And don't let the first word coming out of your mouth next be but. Because <laughs> as, soon as you reply to someone's fear or longing or concern with but, you're telling your partner you haven't been listening and you've stopped the conversation. But instead you ask, what? So what would make you less afraid? If we make making a change an option, if we put making a change on the table, what would you need to have happen next in order for you to feel more comfortable? And that's when the partner gets to say, I wanna know the schedule. I wanna know the money investment or the time investment. and. When do we expect this to work out? And do I get a say? Do I get to say no? Um, those types of questions. And it starts with the partnership, the relationship, the two people together getting really clear on what they want. So often when we talk about entrepreneurs, we tell the entrepreneur to really know what it is they want. At the end of the day, it doesn't work that way when you're already partnered up and you're in a yes. family. Two people need to decide together that this is what they want for themselves. And it can't move until both people are on board. That might mean, Ariana, and this isn't the conversation we're having today, that the relationship simply can't work. When two people have polarizing, non-negotiable needs, it won't work. But if we get really clear on what it is we want, I want my own business. I want time freedom. I want financial freedom. I want lifestyle freedom. I don't want all the work to be on my shoulders. I don't want to feel solely responsible. I'm going to want my own support. Whatever the non-negotiable needs are, you have to be here on a Sunday. You can work six days a week, but you can't work on Sunday. I need mm -hmm. you here for bedtime or I need you present every meal time. Whatever the non-negotiables are, the couple together decides what they want, they know what they're not willing to compromise on, and then together they move to the how. How are we going to do that? So the example I give, and this is a wackadoo example, so bear with me, but it's completely... <laughs> It's completely neutral for people, so it makes it easier for them to apply to themselves when they're not reacting in that personal state. So if you imagine a diabetic having a family reunion with family members they haven't seen in 15 years, um, and the uh, event is held at an all-you-can-eat buffet. 
they want to say yes because they want to be with their family but they can't go to that all you can eat buffet in the same way that everybody else does because they have a condition that needs to be respected looked after managed tended to they have to have a plan in order to get what they want. They can't just eat willy nilly whatever they want, overdose themselves on insulin and call it a day. They have to take the non-negotiable of diabetes with the crystal clear thing they want with their family, the problem being the buffet, and figure it out. It's simply non-negotiable. So the diabetic has to say, I want time with my family. How am I going to do this in such a way that isn't miserable? When partners can say, I want my life to be this certain way. I don't want to compromise on this. How do I make that happen? It engages a problem-solving approach. We may not always hit the right answer at the right time because new things happen and unexpected things. Like, you know, I talked to, talk to you about office hours, and I've been really good about being diligent. But recently, I was an affiliate for a program, and the cart closed on a Friday, so the program opened on a Saturday. So suddenly, I wanted to be a good affiliate. I wanted to show up for the program. But everybody was like in that free Facebook group on a Saturday. So suddenly it was like. Oh, I, oh. just reset us. So I missed what you said. Oh, <laughs> we, had a little, we had a little glitch hiccup there. Glitch. OK, hi, we're back. So what I was just saying is. Um, I wanted to be an affiliate for this program and the cart closed on a Friday and it relaunched and then it was the program started on Saturday. I wanted to show up as a good responsible business person and informed affiliate for the community that had invested in me. But it was a Saturday and I don't work Saturdays. So I had a conversation with my husband and I said, listen, um, something came up here. I really want to be good for the people who signed up and invested in this program because of me. But it's a Saturday. I need to show up for them. Are you OK if I just work for a couple of hours? It might mean that I'm on my phone more than often, but I won't do it every week. I just want to do it this first weekend. And so when he was included in the decision, it's just easier to manage. And sometimes, just as in with any relationship, we're going to have to make a decision that disappoints our partners, that isn't what they want. We're not always going to have 100% buy-in to the things we do and the choices we make. The natural consequence of that is that we have to be willing to clean up that mess. Because sometimes we are going to choose to work on a Saturday when our partner says, I really don't want you to. And you're going to choose anyway. You have to be willing to talk to your partner and say, listen, I know you didn't want me to work and I know you're really ticked off at me and I know you don't agree. I made a decision. This is why I hope you'll understand. I hope we can work this out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I totally having that open communication is the first step. I mean, obviously, no one's perfect. You're always going to have those little kind of awkward moments in your relationship where you zigged and they zagged and hey, it's OK. You'll figure it out and get back on the same path. But, you know, we've we've had to have those conversations lots of times when the business requires Tom, you know, being more on the work end of things and then I'm feeling stuck being the, the parent while, you know, he's working and then I have things I want to work on. So we often have to have that discussion of, hey, I know that you're really busy right now with what you're doing, but I need more support from you on the parent end because I've got things that I need to be doing as well. How can we figure out when can we get more time to do that? You know, what else in our life do we have to say no to right now so that we can take care of us and take care of what we need to do? So, I mean, this weekend I was I literally worked on our website all weekend long, but we had that conversation. I said, hey, listen, I really want to get this done. You know, is it OK if I sit here? And I was in, you know, I was in our, our living room, so I wasn't completely out of the picture. But 
I was very much focused on the website. You know, Tom was kind of doing stuff around the house and getting the kids stuff when they needed to, putting them down for nap time, doing the meals. So it was it was a communicated effort. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna kind of swap it out this weekend, and I'm gonna take lead on doing things that I need to work on, and then you can kind of get stuff you want to get done around the house, and we'll take it as we can. I also think too, Ariana, that those conversations when you don't have trust in your relationship are really scary because yes. you're afraid you're going to hear no. You're afraid that it's going to be the fight of all fights. The it, like people sometimes move through these these negotiations in such a way that they're so afraid of a deal breaker that they don't have the conversation. They just go off and do the thing. So they go downstairs into the office and they work on the website down there. Or they go off and they, you know, like they just take an extra 40 minutes when they're getting gas because they pulled off to the side of the road to respond to an email <laughs> because they don't want to have the hard conversation. And we've seen this in the online community that the more groups there are, the more forums there are, the more membership sites there are, people can run away from their relationships and hide in these communities. And these communities are amazing for support. But honestly, Ariana, I think sometimes the support is excessive. It's mm -hmm. too much. It's like, you can do it, go for it. And nobody's saying, hey, what Wait about your kids? <laughs> like, aren't you married? Don't you, don't you have a person? Shouldn't you check in? And so it breeds this idea that we're on our own. And it increases the isolation that entrepreneurs feel. And they don't realize it's self-created because they've skipped the hard talks. They've avoided it. They've just gone off and done their thing. And that's where that entitlement piece comes in. Is that, like, they didn't want to ask. So they just went in and did, yeah. and then the partner doesn't feel included, supported, respected, and that's when the relationship has a problem. And what people need to realize is that's not the entrepreneurial product yeah. fault. That's not the business. That's the choice the partner made to not have the conversation that's causing the conflict. Entrepreneurship doesn't lead to divorce. Poor communication does. Yes. And this idea that like as business owners, we're more at risk for this, fine. Like I've seen the statistics. I just think we have business owners who are really bad communicators. Mm. Like, and that's, why it leads to, and that's why it leads to divorce. Because if you think about it, like, who are we to think we can own and own our own businesses, right? Like, we all, in order to go out there, have to be a little narcissistic. <laughs> we have to think that we can do it a little bit better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And how do we balance that ego with respect? And that's the core. That's, yes. that's the clear message. And once we recognize that we don't know how to have that conversation then it's so much easier and there's um there's another link to this and um i wasn't planning on sharing this so i'm just <laughs> Share I'm it, just share it all. I'm about to. You can't start that conversation and then change your mind when you're on live. But I'm just, I'm going to take a breath. So you've met me about a year ago. And you've seen the success that I've had. Mm -hmm. You've seen my business go from nobody knows my name to more people know my name. Success is really threatening to a relationship. Because we don't know how big it's going to be. We don't know how many more opportunities are going to take the business person away from home or what's going to happen next. And in traditional nine to fives, success often can lead to more time at home. Yes. People can leave work early. Their managers, they delegate. They get to show up differently. And in theory, entrepreneurship works the same way because we can hire VAs. We can delegate. We can automate. And we think that means more time at home. But what you're outlining is real. You had massive opportunities and you're making huge networking connections and the same thing's happening for me. And I'm a social worker. Anytime I've ever had to go to a training, it's been required by law to be in the state of Massachusetts mm -hmm. because that's the only way I can get my continuing education credits. I've never had to leave home to grow. And as online entrepreneurs, we know that our network equals our net worth. 
We know that networking can't just happen through a computer. We also know that as we make these connections, new opportunities are happening and they're going to take us away. And they've been taking me away. And I, it's this weird mixed bag where suddenly my husband's super proud of me um, and I'm talking about him on live Facebook, so I'm just going to keep going with this because I didn't plan this ahead of time. But it has to be... How do you have the conversation and what are the limits and the conversation of how big are you planning on letting this row? How often are you going to be taken away? Mm -hmm. How is this going to look and how do we have these conversations and success can be just as threatening. And I think sometimes entrepreneurs play small in order to avoid that hard conversation, Mm -hmm. but that is, a a huge significant mistake because then what ends up happening is without a conversation with their spouse suddenly it becomes my spouse hasn't let me my partner hasn't let me I can't go to the conference in Vegas because of my kids I can't do this because of that rather than saying okay new opportunities are changing the way our relationship looks yes given what's in front of us right now What do we need to have differently? And I was remembering recently, and I used it in my discussion with my husband, two celebrities who have a rule that say they're never going to go more than two weeks apart. So even though one's planning a movie in Australia and another's doing in England, that no matter what, they're going to see each other every two weeks. And that has to be a part of the conversation for entrepreneurs. As we grow, what are the rules? What are the guideposts? What are the limits? Because if you only listen to entrepreneurs, the only message we ever freaking hear is just say yes. (laughs) Just say yes. So social media marketing world is in San Diego and such and such a uh, youpreneur is in England. And, you know, like we can list every conference entrepreneurs have. And suddenly we're saying yes to every single one. And we're leaving our families, our spouses behind. So part of the hard conversation is as new opportunities happen to do the stop and evaluation process that we do at the beginning. Yeah. Likewise. If there's failure, if launching hasn't gone, if it's a failure to thrive, failure to launch, that same evaluation process of we gave this thing six months, it's been nine, Mm -hmm. what are we doing? So not just having the conversation on the beginning and going off and being independent, but making sure it's a regular check-in. And that is something that's different that I never have experienced in a job before because my husband was with me through, this is my third reinvention. So he knew when I, he knew me when I was a manager in residential programming and he saw me climb that ladder when we were dating. And then by the time we were married, I owned my own business. And now he's seeing me through this. This is the only time our relationship has shifted so quickly Mm. because of my job. I think me, I always like recognize like army spouses probably have to have this conversation because they're forced to move a lot. Um, And it's, but a lot of times once you're in your nine to five and you do as you do, it doesn't change. Entrepreneurship and the opportunities that are coming our way shift. So does the tide. So it ebbs and it flows. If entrepreneurs and dreamers can figure out a way to have a guidepost with their person about having these conversations and a check in and just how is it going and what are we doing? That partner always feels included in the plan, always feels a part of the story. They don't feel left behind. And that and then you get to grow and become bigger. Even, and we we become better because we've nurtured our relationship and we've nurtured our business. And we've gotten our ambition sort of addressed and taken care of and encouraged. But the thing we need in order to be successful that we decided at whatever points in our lives we decided, our kids, our family, our spouses, we're bringing them to. And that's moved the path. 
Yeah, I'd love that because it goes right along with kind of, you know, Tom and I do the goal planning and we're always checking in with each other and like looking at, okay, we said this and we were, we were going to do this by this point in time. And it's the same sort of thing with that communication back and forth with your spouse. Hey, I said by this point in time, I wanted my business to be this. It's not here. Where do we go from now? You know, let's talk it through. Are you are you okay with me continuing on to keep trying to get this thing going? I have some traction. You know, I think it could work. Or is it just not going to work out? You know, financially, do we need me to go back and get a job to be able to support the family? Like those are the conversations that you have to have. And like you said, they're scary conversations and they're unusual conversations that you don't normally have in a nine to five. But be making that choice to become an entrepreneur. I think you have to have them and you have to get used to having them because otherwise you you get into that okay well my business is is succeeding and it's it's successful and then now my family life is taking a hit for it you know and then who that's not really what you went into it for in the first place most people that are building that business are doing it to create a certain lifestyle and if you can't create that lifestyle with your family then it kind of loses its purpose a little bit. So I love that that connection there, but like with the checking in, it goes right along in the line of the goal planning. And the other piece of this too is the money talk. Is an yeah. elephant in the room that we haven't talked about that I think would almost be irresponsible on my part if I didn't bring <laughs> on because every regular everyday couples fight about money. And so when you talk about entrepreneurship at the core of this is you're changing the family's income structure because yes. even if, sometimes just simply because of investments, um, sometimes because you're transitioning out of one and you're bringing in another. Um, and I, oh, I had such a hard time with this one, Ariana, because I, I had my brick and mortar and my husband was never involved. We had our own bank account because the account sort of said, like, just keep the business separate. So he never had to be involved in things that I decided to purchase. If I wanted this for my new business, if my brick and mortar, any of that. And when we made the decision to decrease my private practice so I could increase the time, I mostly was still able to manage it within the business expenses, except for a really bad month when I couldn't cover the rent for my my office and I needed the personal savings and uh, that was a really hard conversation to have because it just so for the partners to know that when we when we're not doing it and we're not getting done how awful that feels mm -hmm. um, how small we feel how scary it is to go to your spouse and say, I'm doing this and it's not working. So I went to my husband and I said, I, I need some money from our savings. I can't make the, the business rent this month. Um, and you, there was that pause, right? He's just absorbing it. And I say, but I'm doing this, but I'm doing this, but I'm doing this and I'm doing And I'm like trying to prove myself. And he goes, uh, he's like, are you okay? That must be really hard. And I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> My life isn't over. <laughs> I haven't completely effed this up. All right, good. And But to say it out loud and to say it's not going that well. Um, and I think an important part of having the conversation is including your partners in the feelings. Because so often, because we say our partners aren't going to understand, they don't, like, I just, um, there's this new app in town, Anchor FM. I don't oh, know yeah. if you're aware, but I am now on Anchor FM. And I, like, was telling my husband, I'm on a radio show. And he's like, really? Like, I, I finally got down with Facebook, and now you're adding a new thing? Like, I don't, I don't want to know about it, right? And it's always, like, these things they won't understand. At the core... People understand feelings. Mm -hmm. I tried my best and my best didn't work. I thought I took the right course. I thought I got the right information. I thought I was informed. It didn't happen as fast. I think a lot of partners, my story is, is having the conversation where the natural consequence of believing unrealistic expectations because there's really crappy marketing that it's yes. six months to six figures, that this can happen overnight, that you can just throw up a website and suddenly you have clients. And it's just nonsense that's probably hurting people. 
yes at the core level in their family to say i was led to believe something it turned out not to be true we need to figure out the plan i'm so hurt i'm so discouraged i feel so dumb because even if our partners don't understand the business they do understand the feeling they know what it's we've all tried our best and had our best not work we've all like taken a risk and been disappointed that has happened to all of us entrepreneurs or not and when you can connect with your spouse on the feeling you get taken care of and then you can decide what's next and that might mean shifting the business stream and entrepreneurs need to get with the program that that's okay the whole reason why we want to own our own businesses is so we can do it what we want the way we want it and if the way we're doing it isn't working we're the owners we get to shift and say <laughs> i'm gonna work less and i'm gonna pick up a side job i'm gonna you know i'm gonna do this differently i just was talking to a client who in order to make ends meet became an uber driver and was like i like i'm so tired of the money conversation so i'm just gonna go and make some extra money and when you move to the how and you work on solving the problem the relationship gets taken care of yep. when you when you ignore that hard talk when you ignore the hard feelings that come up that's the disconnect that's when relationships break apart yeah, I love that. So you have dropped numerous truth bombs on us today. I know Tom was Tom was typing some of them up as quotes in the comments. So we'll have to go back through and make sure he didn't miss any. Um, where can people find you? And I know you had a freebie that you wanted yeah. to share with everyone today as well. So one of the things that I tend to talk really fast and people can't get it all down. I've been given that feedback. I own it. Um, but I put together a little ebook for partners on how to have these conversations. So you can find it at choose to have it all forward uh, dot com forward slash partners. Um, it's a little ebook where I compile the, all of my different blog posts that I've written on the topic in a more organized way. So people can kind of follow it along and they'll see a lot of the points that I made today. Um, have come up and then otherwise uh, find me on Facebook in my own group over at choose to have it all or um, at my website. Yay. All right. So everyone, we will post those links um, both to the freebie and to Heather's group. Um, if you loved what Heather was talking about today, please, please reach out to her, join the group. Um, like I said, I've had calls with her before and it's just, it's nice to have an entrepreneur who is also good with the mindset stuff because that's something that so many of us struggle with. Um, so if you're struggling with that, reach out and ask a question if you need to. She's around the group and I know she loves to do pop-up lives to answer Q and A's. <laughs> So Heather, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, so many truth bombs, so many good stories. I think people are really gonna enjoy this. And uh, yeah, thank you. Is there anything, any other piece of advice or closing statement you wanna make before we end the show? Communication is key. Like walk away with that. Like you, like you can't just think it, you have to say it. Um, and you have to communicate your intent and tell people what you want them to think. And that way your partner's not gonna walk away with a misunderstanding. This was so much fun and I like totally could, like, keep gabbing with you forever. So it's good that you're a good clock watcher. So <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. All right, everyone, that is the end of our second guest expert episode here on Family Entrepreneur Life. Uh, if you are looking for a group full of other family entrepreneurs who have that mindset of putting family first and having the business support that, uh, please join us over at familyentrepreneurlife.com. And I just have to say this because Heather and I have this thing. Um, we are huge Glee fans, so I wore my Glee shirt just for her today. All right, that is all, and thank you guys for watching.